Hi guys, it's Dr. Unger again. My second video today, um, we have a question from Mr. Tommy Jefferson of Monticello, Virginia. And his question is, why are we wearing masks during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic? Really good question, Tommy, because it's the topic of today's show. So before we talk about masks, and we do have some masks I'm gonna talk about in a few minutes, I think it's really important that we understand why we're wearing the masks. Uh, COVID-19 is a highly, highly contagious illness. Uh, it is more contagious than any illness you've probably ever been exposed to in this country during your, your standard lifetime. Um, most of the other illnesses which are more contagious than COVID-19, we have immunizations for. So most of you have been properly vaccinated and you're already immune to them. Mumps, measles, whooping cough, rubella. These are all viruses that are even more contagious than COVID-19, but you're probably protected from them and you have been since you were a child. So we don't see outbreaks of those very often, except in people who are unimmunized. So this virus passes so easily from person to person that it's causing this pandemic. It's also a potentially lethal virus, and that's a really important point. Um, yes, it certainly strikes people who are older uh, in a more harsh fashion, but even young people are being uh, struck by this virus and are dying from it. Um, in Switzerland, as an example, uh, up to 40% of their ICU admissions are for people under the age of 60. And even if you are young and don't get particularly ill with this virus, you could give it to somebody who might. You could give it to a parent, a grandparent, an older friend, and they might give it to somebody else. And eventually it's gonna hit somebody who's gonna die from it. So if you're out in public and you're around people and you're not wearing a mask, you're not being brave, you're just being selfish. So please, if you're around other people, especially indoors, or if you're doing activities where you're breathing hard, if you're running, if you're jogging, if you're singing, all of these things are super generators of this virus where you could pass it to somebody else. So please wear a mask and I'll show you how to do it safely. So the most important thing to understand first about these masks is that they are not there to protect you. They do nothing to protect us when we wear them. They are there to protect other people. Um, when you cough or when you sneeze, uh, you send out droplets into the air. Um, large and medium sized droplets go out into the air and as they get further and f further from you, and they can pass almost six feet from you, in some case, cases further than that, um, they contain the virus. And so they land on other people. They land on their mouth and their nose and their eyes or on their face. And that's when they get um, the virus. So if you can stop those droplets from passing out and away from you, and that's what the mask does, then you are less contagious. You're less likely to give it to somebody else. Once the virus is out there and coming towards you, it's been aerosolized. And these virus particles are so small that they pass through the, these masks like it's nothing. It's like a soccer ball going through a net that's two football fields wide. And I'm not exaggerating. That's how big it is because these viruses are so tiny. So these masks are not protecting you from illness at all. They're protecting other people. So please do wear them. Remember that you can be contagious with this virus for up to two weeks without symptoms. And you could be giving it to other people that entire time. So just because you feel well, and you feel like you're not sick, it doesn't mean that you can't give it to somebody else. So very important that when you're in public, especially if you're gonna be around other people, that you wear a mask. Now, if you're outside walking around the block and there's nobody around you, you don't need to wear a mask for that. But if you're gonna be indoors, especially, or if you're gonna be around other people, please wear a mask. So we have three different types of masks. I'm gonna discuss each one of them. So the first, the first mask is an N95 mask. This mask is a medical grade mask for health professionals only. These are the masks that doctors and nurses and medical technicians wear in the hospital to protect themselves from the virus. This is the only kind of mask that the virus can't get through. They're very uncomfortable to wear. Uh, they have to be specially fitted to each person. They have to be very tight because they have to be airtight. When you breathe in with one of these masks, um, it doesn't go in around the sides. It has to go through the mask material, which is why it works so well. Uh, they're very hot, they're very humid, and because you, when you're breathing in, it has to pass through the mask material, there's resistance to you breathing in. It's harder to, to breathe in, and you feel the mask squeezing against your face. These are the masks that doctors wear. If you have one of these masks, you should donate it to a hospital or donate it to your doctor's office because this is more masks than you need, and they need them very badly. I only have a handful of them, and I'm a physician. So you don't need to wear these. I'm not going to demonstrate it you should give these to a doctor. This is a standard surgical mask, and you may have these. These are also in very short supply at the moment. Again, I'm a physician, 
I ordered uh, surgical masks for my office in early March, and I just got them three months later. So if you have a supply of these, I would also give these to a doctor, give them to a hospital, give them to an emergency room, because they're still in short supply. But if you do have some of these and you decide to wear them, I will show you how to do it properly. First of all, you'll notice when you get this mask that one side is more rigid than the other. That side goes on your nose. It's got material in it so that you can form fit it around your nose. So the straps go around your ears. This rigid part gets pinched in around your nose. Not only does that make sure it stays above your nose, but it also makes it so that when you breathe, vapor doesn't go above into your eyes. So if you happen to be wearing uh, glasses, it won't fog your glasses up. And the bottom needs to be under your chin. Now, a lot of times I'm walking down uh, at the grocery store, and I see people wearing them like this. That does no good at all. This is almost worthless. Above the nose. Pinch it to the nose. Under the chin. And that's the proper way to wear it. Again, this is not protecting you at all. It's not airtight. There's lots of air passing around the mask. And the virus can go right through this mask without even trying. This is practically completely porous to the virus. But if you cough or sneeze, it will catch the droplets that contain the virus before it can hit somebody else. So that's a surgical mask. One thing about surgical masks that I think is pretty important is that this mask is actually a little bit more dangerous for people to use uh, in the general public. And the reason why is because the virus survives on uh, surgical mask material longer than it survives on cotton material. Almost seven days on a surgical mask. And it only survives for about three days on a cloth mask. Doctors and nurses, when they use one of these, they throw it away. After they're done with it, they dispose of it. They don't reuse it. So it doesn't matter that the vi virus is surviving longer on a surgical mask. But if you're using it and you're reusing it, you're just giving yourself a, a better chance of getting the virus if it gets on the outside of it. So use a cloth mask, and we'll talk about that now. So this is a cloth mask, and they're easily made at home. Um, some of them are on sale at drugstores and whatnot around the country now. Um, my wife Hillary made these. She's been making a bunch of them. Uh, she gives them to family and to friends and to uh, Loyola Hospital here in Chicago that has asked for them. Um, again, cotton is your best material to make these from. Uh, cotton or a cotton blend. So like t-shirt material or pillowcase material, that works really well. Um, the mask should have at least two layers. Um, up to four layers would be uh, ideal. But the more layers there are, the more protective it is, but also the harder they are to wear. Because when there's a lot of material, it gets very hot and humid inside the mask, and they're harder to breathe through. Two is usually sufficient, but up to four would be okay. Um, there's been some talk about putting all kinds of materials inside your mask. HEPA filter material, uh, nylon material. Uh, the fact is that none of these things is going to protect you from the virus. And a lot of them are purporting that if you put a HEPA filter in here, it's going to protect you from the virus. It won't. Uh, even the, little ho the ho holes and pores in a HEPA filter uh, are ten times bigger than the viruses. So it's not going to protect you at all. Um, there's some discussion about whether or not this HEPA filter material or nylon might protect uh, the droplets from getting out better. And maybe it might offer you a little more protection from that standpoint. But don't think that this virus is offering you any protection from the virus. That's the most important thing. Because I think people get a little cavalier when they're wearing a mask thinking that they're safe. Because you're not. This is protecting other people. Um, when you're using a cloth mask, after you're done using it, you do need to sterilize it. Um, there's a couple different ways you can safely sterilize a cloth mask. Uh, the easiest thing is just to wash it in hot water. That will take care of it, especially if you add bleach to the water, and that will kill it dead. Uh, the second thing you can do is you can iron it on the highest setting for about a minute using the steam setting, uh, putting steam through the mask. Steam is very hot. It will kill the virus. That's another way you can um, sterilize it. You can also just throw it in your oven at the lowest setting, 170 or 180 degrees, for 20 or 30 minutes, and that should sterilize it as well. The last way you can sterilize it is just to let it sit somewhere where you're not going to be around it for three days. The virus can only survive on the cloth for about three days, and honestly, it doesn't do very well on the cloth. It, it, while it might survive, it doesn't thrive in any real numbers. So if you happen to have three masks, you can just put them in rotation. Wear one, let the other two sit. Wear the next one, put this one out in the garage or something, let it sit there. And three days later, when it comes time to wear it again, there's no more virus sign. So you could just put them in rotation. I actually do that at work. That's one way to do it. Um, so these are the three different type of masks you, should, you can wear and how to wear them. Uh, there's going to be a link to a website at 
below my video, uh, I link to a website that tells you how to make a mask. So if you happen to be real handy or if you happen to have a sewing machine, you can make these masks yourself. Uh, but it's okay if you buy them. Um, so in conclusion, this is a very highly uh, contagious virus, potentially lethal to anyone of any age group. Don't think that just because you're young that you're immune to this. It's true that the younger you are, the less like, likely you are to become critically ill with this virus, but you can still pass it to other people just as easily, and we don't want you killing other people. So social isolation and mask wearing for everybody when you're in public. Please subscribe to this video if you liked it. Hopefully you'll uh, get more soon, uh, and I hope to make another one in uh, about a week or two that will describe the illness that the coronavirus causes, the signs, the symptoms, uh, how long you're contagious, uh, how long you have to isolate, all of the things, the sort of meaty stuff about COVID-19. Stay safe out there. Bye.